Every community college state employees gathered outside the Olympus building Friday, April 9th to protest their concern for decreasing health care coverage. They were led by staff member Max Phipps. One of the issues here is, well, the biggest issue right now is health care, and it's basic health. In 2008, the uh, legislature diverted $200 million out of the health care fund, which is the reason why there's a shortfall right now. The House right now has uh, come up with $65 million to help cut off this shortfall, and, but the Senate is unwilling to come up with any money. State employees that attended the gathering were asked to call their legislatures to encourage them to fund state employee health coverage more. basic message today is to have them kick in to fund that $65 million to help with the shortfall of health care, which only covers through June of next year. The concern is that without extra financing, health care would be too costly. And basically what we're going to wind up having is catastrophic health insurance. Mm -hmm. now, we'll have health insurance, but we're not going to be able to use it. Yeah. And so now they need more money, so where's it going to come from? State employees, like always. Yeah. Staff members use their noon lunch break to gather as not to do so during their paid time. You know, money's already short. And if we have to pay for um, more, you know, health care benefits or if those are getting cut, mm -hmm. it's going to really hurt um, not only, like, me and my family, but everybody else and my colleagues that I work with, too. Schultz feels that financial problems that would come with less health care benefits would mean more stress and lack of motivation, which would ultimately affect the students. Media maintenance technician Michael Gose's daughter was hit by a car six months ago, and he fears he would have to sell his house to pay for expenses if benefits had decreased at that time. And if this would have happened six months ago, then you would have lost yeah. it. We'd be in our house right now. Goes' wife gets regular medical attention for being a diabetic. She has to visit doctors, endocrinologists, and the insurance wouldn't even work. The deductibles would be so high that the insurance would be useless, yet we'd still have to pay three times as much as we are now to have it with no option to opt out. We'd be forced to pay for something that we can't even use. Costs could also potentially affect EVCC students in the process. Currently our insurance is covering most of it, but if the, the legislators have their way, we would have to pay so much out of pocket that we, we couldn't even afford to use our insurance. We would no, no longer be able to, to go to a doctor. When the expenditures to students as well, a lot of this is gets piggybacked on their shoulders because um, they make cuts to financial aid or grants and funding services. And then um, they raise the tuition mm -hmm. for students. And so they're you know, they're the ones who are affected. AFSME members know that this will be a long battle, but they're willing to do what it takes. Or just this day, or do you think it's going to take um, a, a couple more times of this? Or? I have no idea, but I'm willing to do whatever I need to. And I really like my job um, and what I do for the students, and that's why we're all here. Then I think it starts to affect the quality of services that you're providing for the students, and you feel overloaded and unappreciated. And that, um, you know, morale, no matter how happy a person you are, it starts to bring it down. And then I think the services are affected with the students. And that's, bottom line, that's why we're here. And we're here to help people reach their dreams. As Phipps referenced earlier, even if the $65 million was raised, it would only cover state employees until next year. We still have health care shortages that we have to address, but this is only short term. Joe Dyer and TJ Cottle reporting The Clipper.